So, what is Survival for Walkers? Survival for Walkers is, is a course that we run at Trailblazer Wildcraft. It's a survival course aimed at people who are into mountaineering, walking, rambling, and just perhaps those who are interested in testing new skills and finding out new boundaries. The kind of idea we came up with the course was around uh, an experience I had when traveling in the wonderful Scottish Highland. I was with a good friend of mine called Paul and uh, a good few years ago now we were doing a set of mountains up in Scotland called the Mamores, the Ring of Steel. And while it was March, we prepared for extreme cold on the tops. And what actually happened is it got really, really hot, like silly hot. So to cut what is a, a long story short, on the second day, we were making very poor progress for us. The heat had got to us and also the day before we both got dehydrated. Now we had managed to hydrate in the night, but even so, it had left us in a not ideal state for the day ahead of us. After summiting a Munro, we came down and started going up towards another Munro and we had a time check and we realized that if we were going to continue on the route that we had chosen we were going to be benighted on a mountainside and one with a reputation for fairly gnarly ground and we were heading towards gnarly ground. Now since I've been back to Scotland since we we made the decision and we've been on that terrain and it was gnarly ground as you can see perhaps from the footage now so we had a chat and we made a decision that we didn't want to be benighted in technical ground and we were going to get off the mountain now at the time we were quite a far way away from our original campsite and looking on the map i thought there was a chance that we could use an area of steep ground to access a lower path to get us back to the car but i was not sure about that at all it was a gamble to put it mildly however saying that we had quite a lot of safety equipment with us and the other option that we had decided upon if that was a no-go was that there was a, a piece of plantation that was lower down the mountainside and we were going to set camp there for the night with the equipment and uh, belongings we had with us and I was fairly confident that we would make a go of it and have a a relatively comfortable night and that is absolutely the essence of survival for walkers is that basically the scenario is you're in Scotland or an area like that you've taken a wrong turn or your plans have gone awry and you're looking at spending a night on the hill now there is a huge subject matter to talk about here mountain safety hill safety and on our Mamores trip Luckily, we found a deer path going down the steep ground just on the side of it and that resulted in us being able to get back to camp just as night was falling. It was, it was one of those kind of fluky, it just worked out. And I've since then come across a number of scenarios, either read about them or experienced them or had friends experience them, which suggested to me that there was a need to look at survival scenarios that walkers are going to face and this is what the course is all about other scenarios that we've come across is there was just this year a, a good example is the scottish mountain rescue or one of the scottish mountain rescues needed to rescue a group of people they had summited a munro in poor visibility and unbeknownst to the lead navigator the compass had become reversed so they took a bearing on the summit walked on that bearing and found themselves in a remote valley now they called for help and the mountain rescue came and they helped them to return safely home now i'm not saying they did the wrong thing they're far from it in fact but perhaps 
if they had a little bit more kit or a little bit more knowledge they may have taken the choice to spend a night on the hill or should I say in the valley perhaps more importantly in somewhere like a plantation or a forest so recently we've had a backpacking trip up to the lakes and on a summit with low visibility my friend Matt was lead navigator with John and Matt took a bearing from the summit but Matt had worked out that the compass didn't really seem to be true to what we were expecting we were expecting a hard left and it was kind of sending us right so what had happened the compass had become reversed just like what happened to the group up in the Scottish Highlands now the Scottish Highlands group did identify what had happened what had happened was that the league navigator had a mobile phone case with a magnet clasp and had inadvertently put the compass near this and that was a strong enough magnet to be able to change the polarity of his compass now we've not actually identified what had happened to Matt's he had no magnets on him at the time but we worked out that the angle we were expecting to leave seemed wrong we also all of us had compasses Matt had a spare compass as well and we worked out that the compass was wrong and therefore we navved and we were okay so that's just a few examples of walkers that in mountainous areas have one got into trouble they needed to call mountain rescue and again I'm, I'm not saying that this is replacing the need for mountain rescue this is about giving people a little bit of um, knowledge and skills to allow them to cope and perhaps instead of having a, a grim cling to existence on, on, a, on a mountainside or, or a valley to actually find an, an amount of comfort and enjoyment even in the challenge of staying in a relatively harsh environment but actually being comfortable this is what I'm going to be doing today as well I'm going to do um, the practical so around four o'clock this afternoon um, which I, I, I think is a relatively reasonable time I'm going to start to look for a campsite I'm in actually the North York Moors at the bushcraft site in fact and it's about 200 meters so that's roughly where in certainly in in, in the um, scenario me and Paul face we were about 200 meters the forest was and it's February as well now you couldn't believe it with the sunshine you really wouldn't and just to uh, <laughs> De to, to kind of defend myself a little bit so this beautiful weather and, and the ideal conditions for doing this practical is I planned this eight months ago and expected the weather to be uh, shall we say a little bit more um, harsh than this but luckily um, it's turned out to be a bit more like late spring but even so what I'm going to be facing is a long night it's going to be colder up here as well because we're that little bit more elevated there's uh, not meant to be any cloud cover this evening either so again temperatures will drop and I have uh, on me at the moment the kit that I would carry on a day walk in February in Scotland so well that's a slight lie what I always carry is a bothy bag a two man even if I'm on my own and the last time I went for a solo walk in Scotland was um, up on Ben Moor and I carried the equipment I have today and a bothy bag but I'm actually going to kind of reverse cheat because the bothy bag is basically a tent without poles and I can pretty much rig a tent out of it so I think that would be um, so they're not cheating because at the end of the day it's the kit I would normally bring it would be um, making it just a little bit too easy for myself so I've, I've swapped that out and it's also a relatively expensive piece of kit but one everyone should carry really should slight tangent there but really should I'm actually going to substitute it out for a, perhaps the more classic thing to people to carry which is the orange survival bags that are widely available 
I also always carry uh, a silver survival blanket, so I've left that in my bag as well. But I also always carry an escape bivy, uh, and this is a small, like, bivy bag kind of thing, really. Why do I carry that? For one, why do I carry all of that, in fact? One, it's all pretty light stuff. And if I'm on my own, I fall and I break something and I'm at altitude, so I'm like 900 meters up the snow on the ground, I have a broken ankle, I might not be able to have phone signal, then what do I do? I'm in a world of trouble and that's why I carry the additional equipment that I carry, that I will carry today and use today in, in, in the uh, survival scenario that I'm gonna place myself into. And it's, it's more, not for, getting down off the hill and spending the night in a forest is far more to do with being hurt up high and avoiding hypothermia and basically a premature death which my wife would never forgive me for. The psychology of survival is, is, a, is an area of some considerable study and it is a fascinating area to look at certainly for a bushcrafter or an outdoors person for any kind of wild crafter and I think the real key to it is self-belief that you will through effort and knowledge and just gumption come through something and not give up or give in I think that the one of the interesting points of psychology and survival for walkers is when to make the call that you're gonna have to change your plans. And when you're gonna make the call to set camp, because that's a fairly big thing to want to do. Why? Because you're gonna have to perhaps let somebody down, cause fear to a loved one. And that is never an easy decision to make. Now again, Paul again, in November in Scotland, we were in a, uh, a tourist information shelter and uh, we'd made camp there and the night was a, a fairly harsh night and it was cold it's november it's, it's the highlands again and in staggers a guy drenched hill gear but drenched and there's a there's a, a, a river feeding into a lock near us and it's swollen because it's raining and i said oh guys wow that was that was really scary i've just i've just followed the river because I'd got a bit out of my way and I was getting late and, and I, I nearly got swept away. And, oh God, I'm, I'm back now, I'm all right, I'm all right, my car's just over there. And I, and I did, even then I did think, you've, you've just taken a major risk. You've just threatened yourself with hypothermia, but perhaps more acutely, you've threatened yourself with drowning. And he was obviously highly distressed. And it really gave me thinking that perhaps that wasn't the right call perhaps what he needed to do then was go you know in fact not even then perhaps even four or five hours ago go this is not going according to plan my pace is slower just like us on the memoirs our pace is slower than we expected we're gonna get benighted do we press on regardless or do we take a step back reassess our plans try and get off the hill and if not get off the hill give ourselves time to set somewhere up so we can have a comfortable evening so what are the skills that we need um there are a, a, a wealth of skills to be fair we're going to be building a shelter i'm going to be building a shelter i'm going to be building a fire hopefully as well and again both those two elements come together to protect me from the cold conditions of the evening and again exposure hypothermia these are two really dangerous things for walkers that are in trouble they can kill and do kill on a regular basis and once hypothermia sets in once you start down that path then it's a real hard thing to reverse without additional equipment warm tent blankets that kind of thing hot tea and it's something to be really wary of the other thing about getting cold is it's unpleasant it's not a nice thing to be and one of the things that survival for walkers tries to aim to do is to get people to think that okay i'm going to spend a night on the hill it's not going to be perfect i'm probably not going to sleep very much 
but is it going to be a miserable existence well hopefully not and that's what fire and shelter will do for us at the end of the day for our long time uh, stone age ancestors to have spread into the uh, northern climates we needed cultural adaptations clothing which i'm wearing today i'm wearing um hill clothing and we needed fire and we needed shelter so we when we have these basics covered we can then start to relax a little bit enjoy ourselves a little bit more and that's the key to survival for walkers <laughs>